Man, I'm so bored. I want a good game to play. Man, 2021 is supposed to be so awesome. I mean, we've got all our movies coming back, all of our comic book shows on Disney+. Plus. We've got The Mandalorian. You name it, we got it coming back. We're supposed to be having some good games too, right? Oh, it's not even the end of January yet. Man, that's not the point. Look at this list. I mean, look what we've got here. We've got Cobra Kai. I mean, really? Like, they're coming out with a game for that? We got Iron Conflict, MXGP, Scott Pilgrim's what? I mean, why is there a game coming out for that? Oh, wait. Hitman 3. January 20th. Dude, it's the 21st, man. Why the heck haven't I heard about this yet? Man, I got to order the game right now. To the real flock from IO Interactive. Enjoy, noob. What? What's going on, guys? My name is Max, and welcome back to another video. If this is your first YouTube video that you've seen of mine, first off, welcome. Glad to have you here. But also, this is the type of content that I make. I make content talking about how to maximize not only your YouTube channel, but also your live stream. So from time to time, a really good game comes out, and I like to release videos around that time to help you guys find the best settings for the game. In this particular case, we're taking a look at Hitman 3, which just released on January 20th, 2021. The Hitman series is by far one of my favorite game franchises that's ever come out. I mean, from the first game back in 2006 to the most recent game that came out in 2018. Seriously, who can not like playing as a secret agent Hitman dude, right? Right? All right, enough of the history lesson. Let's get down to business and the reason why you click this video. You want the best stream settings to have the best quality for your stream, as well as to have the most stability for your stream, AKA you want the secret sauce, so to speak. Man, that was a funny joke. Yeah. All right, so before we get started, one thing to keep in mind is that I'm gonna be going through all the settings from OBS to your in-game settings. And then after that, I'm gonna have a series of tests testing all sorts of different quality settings. All right, so let's blast through all the basic stuff that you should know already, but I'm gonna remind you anyways to make sure that you have your graphics cards, updated drivers for AMD or your Nvidia card. And you also wanna make sure that your Windows is fully updated. And lastly, you wanna make sure that your OBS is fully updated. All right, so let's dive into my OBS recommended settings. First off, this is fairly new, but do not run your OBS in admin mode. It's very important that you don't do this anymore because you can actually turn on game mode as well as game acceleration hardware. They will allow your OBS to be prioritized with the game so that way it avoids you having to do OBS in admin mode and this actually saves you a lot of resources. So the output resolution is completely up to you. I like to run my stream at 900p because I like to save as many resources as possible and truthfully especially with this game I did not notice a big difference in terms of quality between the 1080p output and the 900p, so that's totally up to you and your preference. One of the biggest tips I can give you when capturing any game with OBS is that you wanna be using game capture. This saves you so much in terms of resources, so definitely utilize that if you can in any game that you're doing, especially this one. Lastly, if you're using an NVIDIA card, make sure that you're running NVENC. Even if you have a two PC setup, I strongly advise that you run NVENC and make sure you have it on max quality. If you're having some performance issues, go ahead and drop it down to quality because that can Hope you save some resources on your stream. Diving into the end game settings, we're only gonna cover a few things here of note, but the main thing is to make sure that the resolution obviously matches your monitor resolution. For example, mine is a 1440p monitor. And I guarantee you're like me and you're wondering what the heck is exclusive full screen and what the heck is full screen? Exclusive full screen is basically non-borderless full screen and then full screen is basically borderless full screen. I mean, were you expecting some big reveal or something? You can go ahead and leave VSync on or off. I didn't notice a big performance difference, so I just left it on, but the interval one, you wanna make sure to keep that at one. Gamma correction is all up to your personal preference, so do whatever you want. Basically, it makes the game a little brighter. All right, so the big one, what the heck is super sampling? I don't know, why don't you go read the prompt that pops up next to it when you highlight the setting? Basically, what it comes down to is this. I noticed a small amount of difference in terms of quality with super sampling on, but, the trade-off for me was that I had to run the game basically at console frames per second. Basically, this one comes down to you. If you wanna play the game at 30 FPS with slight visual quality increases, go right ahead. I'm not playing the game at 30 FPS. Thank you very much. I'm gonna talk about simulation quality as well as variable rate shading, so don't worry about that. I'm gonna talk about that right after the testing. For the testing, it's super simple. I tested the game at ultra settings, high settings, as well as medium settings. With all those quality settings in mind, for each one, I toggled on and off super sampling as well as I showed the differences in quality and performance with variable rate shading. All right, with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into the testing.
All right, before I get started with the conclusion, yes, this is my second day of filming. Definitely don't at me, okay? I know this is my second day. So I sorted through all the footage and I watched everything back all in sequence of the ultra high and medium settings. And honestly, it was pretty anticlimactic. There was not really much of a visual difference, nor was there much of a, a performance difference on my end. That's not to say that there wasn't some differences that I noticed and I'm gonna go through them right now so that way you can get all the information for when you actually decide to stream the game. One thing that I noticed that was pretty interesting, no matter which quality setting I used, there was not really much of a difference in terms of the GPU usage because personally I like to leave a little headroom on my GPU so that way I'm not maxed out because little things like alerts channel points on my stream like I have they all tend to disrupt the stream if your GPU is constantly at max load so I like to leave like around 10% headroom just in case. So with this game, you're not gonna get that. It's gonna be pretty much at 98 or 99% on a regular basis. All right, so getting into the average FPS for each quality setting. For ultra, it stayed around 85 FPS on average. For a high, it stayed around 90 FPS on average. And for medium, it stayed around 95 FPS for average. This is not surprising, but it's not as big of a leap as I thought it would be. Lastly, the CPU usage stayed about 30%, and this is gonna be important for when we talk about simulation quality here in just a second. So super sampling is complete garbage. I wouldn't even bother using it at this point because going down to 30 FPS was absolutely miserable, even on low settings, so I wouldn't use it. I mean, maybe if you had a 30 series card, because personally I'm using a 2070, that might've been the problem, but if you have a 3080, give it a shot, try it out. Let me know down in the comments what you think, but if you have a 20 series card, just don't even bother. It's just a waste of time. Variable rate shading is interesting because I've never seen this before. I've heard of DLSS and this kind of reminds me of that, but it's not DLSS obviously. So the interesting about this is it's supposed to sacrifice a little bit of resolution in order to give you some better performance. So with this, I actually didn't notice a performance increase. I noticed a performance decrease, which I found super interesting because this thing claims to lower your resolution a little bit to increase your performance and I noticed that the resolution lowered a little bit, but I didn't expect my FPS to go down. I can't recommend using this because I can't recommend you taking the resolution hit for no reason, but if maybe there's other areas in the game that you guys have experienced using this that helped you be able to play those areas a little bit more smoothly, definitely let me know down in the comments. For the simulation quality, I found this pretty interesting, and I feel like that if you're running your stream with H.264, this can actually make a big difference in terms of how much CPU uses the game is actually taking. So if you're seeing some CPU usage spikes and you wanna try maybe adjusting this to the lower quality setting, definitely give it a shot because it's actually a pretty interesting and unique setting that I haven't seen before either. After all of that, here's my final recommended settings that you should be using for Hitman 3 and these are my personal settings that I'm gonna be using on my stream. The OBS settings that you're seeing right now on screen are what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using the 900p resolution as well as the NVENC at best quality. Also, I'm gonna be capturing the game in game capture. Also, like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm gonna be using game mode as well as hardware acceleration in Windows. And here's my in-game settings I'm gonna be using. I'm basically gonna be using the high settings because I didn't really notice a big difference between high and ultra. And plus just in general, I like to avoid using the maximum settings on stream only because I like to save as many resources as possible for just in case moment. Like I said, I like to do videos like this where I test the best settings for different games. And I did Cyberpunk 2077 fairly recently. So if you're having issues streaming that, definitely check out that video right over here. But anyways, guys, thank you so much. And we'll see you next time on here. We, we have absolutely made a sloppy mess of this mission. Yeah, this is a cool mask. I love it. I would wear this mask in real life. A drag race outfit. Yep, pretty much. <clears throat>